Howdy everyone, so today I'm gonna to be looking at the Smooth X Gimbal from Zhuin. And if you wanna skip ahead of all this babbling in the intro and you wanna get straight into the review, just jump ahead to this time. So a few months ago, I reached out to Zhuin uh, requesting their Crane 3S. I wanted to do some reviews uh, using my Blackmagic cameras. I have the 6K and the Ursa Mini Pro. And I wanted to play around and make some tutorials. They never responded to that message. And then just a few weeks ago, I get a message from them asking if I'd like to review the Smooth X Gimbal. So this is a teeny tiny, a little foldable two axis smartphone gimbal. So right away I was thinking I don't shoot any video on my phone so I probably don't want to review this, I would never use it. But then I thought I've never owned a gimbal, I'd like to play around with it so send it over. And I gotta tell you, using this for a few days really makes me want to shoot more content with a phone. So right now I do reviews and tutorials and when I'm out in the field shooting lone wolf style, I have this behind the scenes camera rig set up and this is a really simple setup. It's just a Sony cam here with a little Manfrotto mini tripod. And this Sony's great, it's, it shoots 4K, it's got the flip around screen. It's super light, I can throw this into my backpack so if I'm carrying a lot of other gear, this is really no problem to bring with me and I get a lot of my main shots with this setup. Occasionally if I have something that's a little bit of a bigger budget, I can actually hire a second shooter. But this is generally mandatory and always with me. Just after a day shooting on my phone with the SmoothX, I'm realizing that that setup could possibly be a replacement for this setup. So that's really the context of this review is the phone using the SmoothX gimbal as like a B-cam behind the scenes camera. All right, so let's take a closer look at this rig. So here you can see how small this thing is. It folds up, it can fit in my hand. This is a super cheap gimbal, it's only $59. And if you throw in an extra 10 bucks, you'll get the combo pack, which has a carrying case and this mini tripod. And again, with all the lone wolf content I'll be capturing, the mini tripod is a necessity. You connect the gimbal to the phone via Bluetooth and you control it using the ZY Cami app. The app has a pretty terrible rating and you have to create an account to get everything set up, so that's a little annoying for some people. I found that after using it for a day or two, you really get used to it and it's all good. Now, Zhuin has a list of compatible phones that work with this gimbal, and mine happen to not be on that list. I'm using the Huawei P Smart 2020. Depending on the phone you use, you'll have access to different features, so be sure to check out this list. It shows you what features will be available to you. For example, in what resolutions you can shoot, what frame rates you can shoot, if you can shoot slow motion. It's a really simple rig. The power button is on the gimbal arm. It has record and mode buttons on the front here, along with a joystick, and then there's a zoom button on the side of the handle. Double tapping the mode button will switch between vertical and horizontal. It does feel a bit fragile, but not so much cheap. Again, this is a two axis gimbal, so you can control the pan and the roll. It also has this telescoping handle, so you can get your selfie stick on. Really great for vlogging. So the gimbal has three main shooting modes, or follow modes. And this controls how the gimbal will react when you're shooting with it. Now, PF stands for pan follow, so essentially wherever you're kind of pointing the gimbal, the camera is gonna orientate to that. So if you're, if you're shooting yourself in like selfie stick mode, it's great, so no matter where you turn your body, that is gonna automatically follow and stay on your face. Or if you're filming in front of you, wherever you're walking and you point that stick, it's kind of like point and shoot mode. L stands for lock. This just locks that off, so as you move the gimbal, that camera's gonna stay in place. And then last but not least, you have roll and pan following mode. So this not only follows you with the pan, but also with the roll. So if you wanna get some crazy Dutch angles. Now the main point here, they call this the smooth X, but ironically, it's not very smooth. But I mean, what can you expect from a $59 two axis gimbal? I found that I did have to use my videographer legs, you know, I'm rolling my foot and walk all smooth. That did give me some smooth shots. And as you can see here, here's a side by side. I did some walking downstairs, one where I just held the phone by hand and the other where I used the gimbal. And then even a third where I used the gimbal completely with the arm telescoped all the way out. Now a lot of this has to do with the internal tech of the phone. Some of them have internal stabilization that might be slightly different. And again, my particular phone was not on the list of compatible phones. However, I did use another phone that was compatible and I still got the same kind of bumps when I was walking. It, it was uh, bumping pretty hard. But again, $59. One of my favorite features of this gimbal is the time-lapse shooting mode. As long as you have that mini tripod, you can capture really amazing time-lapse videos with this interval recorder. So you can set the time interval and then you can set the duration of your recording. And then it's gonna tell you once it's recorded how long that time-lapse is gonna be. You can even set a path. So here I've set two points, a start and an end point, so that my camera is slowly panning to the left over five minutes. This is also called a motion lapse. Honestly, for me, this feature alone makes the gimbal worth the money. Because if you think back to the times of when you have like a DSLR and you wanted to do interval recording and you buy an intervalometer, I don't know if I said that right, intervalometer, those things run anywhere between like $50 to $200. 
Another really interesting and very cool feature that makes this gimbal worth the money is the gesture control. So for this type of shooting that I'm doing, this lone wolf style shooting, this is really helpful because I can set this up and then I can throw a gesture at the camera and that will not only trigger the recording of the video, but it'll also track my face. So it'll lock onto my face and then if I walk around a little bit left to right, that camera is gonna pan and follow me. Okay, so final thoughts. While the Smooth X isn't very smooth, I mean, it's kind of smooth, you saw the side by side. While it's not very smooth, this thing is like a Swiss Army knife. All the things that it can do at the price point. So this is 59 or actually $69 with a combo pack. You think about it, you can do time lapse, you can do motion lapse, you can do hyper lapse. Um, you can have gesture control, but if you're buying this just for the smooth aspect of it, the gimbal, um, you might want to look at some other models. But it, it is still very much a useful tool for filmmakers, vloggers, people creating video content. One other thing that I really notice is the workflow of this. So for example, right now I'm not posting a lot of video content to Instagram. And the reason for that is because of all of the obstacles and the clunky workflow. So for example, if I shoot something on this Sony cam or even my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cam, if I want to share that on Instagram, I have to cut it up, I have to transfer it to my desktop, and then I cut it up and prepare it and change the aspect ratio if I want to make it square or portrait or total vertical, whatever. Then I have to transfer that file back to my mobile device via Google Drive or Dropbox, and then I can upload it. Whereas if I'm using my phone on this uh, SmoothX gimbal, I'd be able to not only instantly shoot something really quickly in a vertical mode, then I can automatically upload that to Instagram because it's right there on my phone. I probably still won't share anything to Instagram. So will I be replacing this rig with my phone and a SmoothX? Probably not right now because my phone is pretty crappy, but playing around with the SmoothX makes me want to buy a nicer phone because then if I could shoot with that phone, everything is immediate and speaking about all the social media kind of content you want to do, it's a really, really sweet rig for that.